Hi, Joe here from Computer Music Magazine. I've got the Ableton Live 10 Beta open here, and in this video I'm going to put the new Drumbus device through its paces. So I'll load Drumbus on this kick drum. Ableton call it an analog style drum processor. All these processors are obviously going to boost the final level quite a lot compared to the dry signal, so I can use the output gain to back the effect down. And now when I turn the plugin on and off, you can hear what's going on a bit more clearly. So firstly, the input signal comes in and hits this fixed compressor section that's engaged via this comp button. Then after that, the signal flows into this drive stage. I'll push up drive to apply distortion. And we've got three drive modes to choose from. Soft is a wave shaping distortion. Medium is limiting distortion. Hard mode is clipping distortion with a bass boost. Both this compressor and drive are input dependent, but you can use this trim amount to back off input levels if needed. So under the hood, after the drive stage, the signal is split into three frequency bands, low, mid and high. So I'm going to talk about what happens to the low part of the signal after the drive. It's piped into this boom section, which if you're familiar with Little Lab's Voice of God, it's a non-linear resonant high pass filter. And what you can do is push up boom to add its sub bass content. And you can tune the high pass filter's frequency with this knob. To help tune Boom's frequency, the device displays the nearest MIDI note down here. And when I click on it, it will lock the frequency value to that note. And that's very handy if you want to add low end to a kick then tune that low end to the root key of your track. This meter here gives you an idea of the bass content in your signal, and this is independent to the boom control. So it will monitor the bass in your signal, even without any boom added. And clicking this audition button applies a low pass filter, so you can audition only the low frequencies. Now you'll notice that the sub weight I've added to this kick has quite a long tail, and you do have to be careful not to swamp the low end with all this kind of seductive sub bass. So luckily the length of the new low end can be pulled back and reined in with this decay slider. So remember we were talking about, this was just the low portion of the signal after the drive stage. So it's gone through the boom processor and then that low signal is sent straight to the output. Now to the mid range, after the post drive crossover I mentioned earlier, the mid-range part of the signal goes into this crunch stage. And using this, I can apply distortion to only the mid frequencies. And that's really handy for adding a bit more bite and presence to anything that needs to cut through a little more in a busy mix. Again, I can use the output gain to pull back the level after distortion. So the high portion of the signal that comes out of the drive stage feeds into a mid-high mix and then the output of this mid-range crunch also flows into that mid-high mix. And then this combined mid-high mix signal can then be filtered back with this damp parameter, which is quite useful if you find these processes are bringing out too much top-end harshness. And then that mid-high mixed signal then hits this transient stage, which is a one-knob transient processor. Interestingly, turning this clockwise does emphasise transients. 
but also the sustain as well, as you can hear. And pulling it back, that does reduce the transients a little, but it's also pulling the sustain right down. So it's doing a bit more than just raising or lowering the attack level, say. Okay, so that's all the individual processes covered within Drumbus. After using it for a while, something I've found is that it is quite tricky to apply very subtle processing. The different stages all shape your signal quite a bit and can get very heavy handed. So it is a good device to use if you really want to shape thin, weedy sounds and impart some aggression. So it's very easy to transform sounds um, and you don't always want that, which is why it's great to be able to mix the effect in parallel. I'm just going to load a new drum bus instance on my percussion group here. In use, I've had great results when pushing all the parameters to extremes and then pulling back the mix amount to a very, very low wet value. So you just get that subtle tickle of color and body as opposed to full on sonic destruction. So just to wrap up, I don't think any of these processes are particularly groundbreaking by themselves. You've probably already got your favourite third-party plugins for these tasks. But I do think the combination of them all together work well as a whole, and it's great to have them here in a bundled live device. I do think the boom section is especially nice for adding really clean sub-weight to kick drums. And drum bus, funnily enough, actually works quite well on non-percussive sounds. I'll load an instance on this bass channel. Anyway, that's all for this quick video. Hopefully it's given you a glimpse of drum bus. Make sure you like, share and subscribe wherever you're watching this video and get in touch, leave us a comment to tell us what you think of this device and the new Live 10 update in general. Thanks for watching.